Hello there, friends, and welcome to my first official YouTube video. Hooray! Uh, you fine folks have been asking me to try and make some longer content for you in the comments on my TikTok. So I decided that I would finally put my anxieties to one side for five minutes and just do the dang thing. Today, I'm going to sculpt some of my lemon worry warts and talk to you about a really requested subject, which is how to be comfortable with sucking, or as I like to call it, the make some garbage method. Now, let's just start off with a little bit of a personal story to embarrass myself and enlighten all of you about the first event that I ever attempted to sell my sculptures at. So I started sculpting seriously close to a decade ago. Some of the first things that I created were these little sculptures that I called littlings, and of course my worry warts. Uh, I was focusing on making a world of whimsy with lots of storytelling and personality for every little critter that I created. I'd been posting some of my work on Facebook at the time, and a few people had purchased some of my sculptures that I'd made, so I was getting encouragement to keep creating and making more of them. A friend of my then boyfriend's was looking for someone to share a booth at a festival with, and he mentioned that I'd been working on building up stock to try and do just that, and would be a pretty good fit for the event. So I decided to take a leap and use the money that I had saved up to prep for the event. I sculpted every day for hours, I worked on building up a display and how my table layout would look, I got a cash box and folding tables, I was so excited and I invested what I had to, it had to be hundreds of dollars into clay and sculpting time. The event was a festival where you could camp and there was a bit of a drive involved, as well as a fee to pay for the booth. I can't quite remember the exact numbers now, but we're going to say that it cost for me to go there and set up shop was about $500 all in all. I had done the calculations with my sculptures and had made more than enough to make a profit after weeks of pouring my heart and soul into everything. I was creating, designing new and exciting projects to release, and finally the weekend came for the event, and I made the trip out there with a ton of hope and expectations, and I'm just gonna go in bed and be pretty blunt about how things ended up going. I bombed. And I bombed hard. My first event, I did not making any profit at all. I lost out. I lost out by a long shot. Uh, the events didn't have enough people. And my work honestly wasn't the greatest standard eight years ago. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't where it is now by a long shot. And I remember feeling so anxious and sad that I cried. I cried at the event. I cried when I got home. I sat in a corner and I just curled up and sobbed. And I had put weeks of effort into preparing for this event and I had failed. No one had been interested and I felt like I was putting my time and efforts in the wrong place. I was seriously deflated and I wanted to give up. And that moment was really critical for me because I could have given up at the first hurdle. Realistically, I had lost money and I could have just decided that I would give in there and leave it and never look back. But the thing was, despite how I had failed... I was also really happy making art. The preparation, the excitement, and the sculpting had really made me feel fulfilled. And that, after several days of moping and feeling bad about myself, is the meaning that I decided to take from the situation and pursue. I realized that the disappointment and sad feelings about my art that had been associated with my expectations, that I would make a profit right away, and that was kind of the wrong approach. I dedicated myself to making time to practice every single day and accepting that a lot of the things I was making and doing were just going to be inherently bad and not work out. But I would have fun doing it and I genuinely believe that that is how any skill is built up or why we might give up on things. I know I give up on things because it's hard or I'm not having fun or because I'm bad at it because <laughs> I'm not seeing the results that I want right now. And unfortunately, sometimes there's a little voice in my head that says, you are terrible at this and you should stop. And occasionally that voice wins. I have hundreds of abandoned drawings and projects because my brain gets bored and I haven't returned to them yet. And I've also been trying to learn Japanese for like 10 years and I keep stopping and starting. But to succeed, you have to tell that voice, shh, I'm having fun. And it's okay to make garbage. It's okay if I'm bad at this. I won't always be bad at this. You can be garbage at art. 
You can be garbage at dancing. You can make garbage math and science projects. The point is that there's kind of a power in how we respond to how we fail. And you can stop and start as many times as you want. If it's something that you really want to do and it's making you happy, just remember to come back to it eventually. Maybe. Or not. There's literally no pressure. You get to decide. This was just one of the first of many failures too. I It went on for several years and I went to several events where I prepared for weeks only to make a very minimal profit, lose out, or just break even. There was no way of knowing how it would go and I continued to work at it. Not because of the money I was going to make, but because of the joy I felt in creating. Because there was literally no money in it for the first four, five years. I see a lot in my comments of people asking me how to start a small business or how they can find success with selling their art. And I'm about to disappoint everyone because simply put, guys, I don't know. I don't know how I ended up where I am now. I didn't go into things with a strategy at all. There wasn't really any planning for how things were going to work out. I was thinking of the things that I loved and I thought were fun and then making them and letting everything kind of fall into place or learning skills as I needed to. If I needed to take photos, I did. I made social media accounts and I took everything kind of one step at a time so that I didn't get overwhelmed. I also asked other friends that were small business owners and I I made those along the way, these different events, and they were more experienced. I asked them how they would do things and it became more about a community supporting one another as well as, you know, all of us educating each other with different skills. Another hurdle that I wanted to address with you guys is that so many of the younger creative people that I've encountered set themselves up with unrealistic expectations of what they need to start doing what they want to do. And I'm going to tell it to you straight. If you're looking to start something new, don't let the things you need to do it, stand in your way. That means like, you know, don't worry about buying the fanciest camera or if you have the best paints or if you have the fanciest computer. You can start creating with what you have right now. Even if it's not the quality or standard that you're used to, you can build up your skills and equipment to match your taste over time. Not everybody is going to be a complete professional right when they start out. I encourage you to look at somebody in a field that you're interested in pursuing and try to scroll back and see kind of where they started from. It can be really encouraging. Learning new skills over time is how it should be. So if you're overwhelmed with starting, understand that every day you work on whatever goal you're aiming for, you'll get the skills you need as they come. You'll build bigger muscles as you run and train. You'll figure out your art style as you paint and create. Your house will get cleaner the more often you take five minutes to tidy up. Be patient and kind with yourself while you're learning and growing. If you get comfortable with failing and being embarrassed, then there aren't really any limits to where you can go with your passion. Alternatively, you can also give up, which is totally acceptable as well, just so that you know. There is absolutely no shame in saying you're done with something if you really don't like it. It might just not be your path, and you should listen to that if whatever you're working on is making you miserable. But... If you're happy with what you're making, but you're just feeling insecure about how to make your tastes match what you're creating, you can just make some garbage until it's not garbage anymore. I did, and I'm really glad that I built my little garbage life with my garbage house and my garbage mistakes. (laughs) I love you guys, and I hope this helps someone out there feel a bit comfier with not being perfect straight away. This is actually me making garbage because I was scared to make a YouTube video. So there you go. We can all do this together. And here's some little ending cap announcements. Uh, Worry warts, as of this second, are out of stock, and I am busy working on pre-orders while we are getting ready to move, hopefully, to our new house next month. But if you want to get notified of when I will have more, you can sign up for my email list on my website or follow my Instagram. The links are in the description here for both of those things. I am also planning on doing a little Worry Words giveaway when I hit 75,000 on Instagram. So that would be fun for people who like free things and who like me, if you're interested. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more from me, make sure to poke all the happy little buttons so that YouTube thinks I'm cool and shows me to new humans. And if you feel like supporting me and my creation of content, I've got lots of cute art available for sale on my website. We've got stickers, we've got prints, we've got shirts. It's www.karascuttlefish.com and it helps me feed my husband and my cats. Okay, I love you. Bye!